Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. A Leprechaun's Gold In an abandoned oratory, surrounded by the vast green fields of County Luck, Daniel Burns searched. He didn't know what he was searching for, exactly, but he knew these old, dilapidated structures always sheltered hidden treasures. He wouldn't have wasted so many weekends traveling the countryside to pillage the jilted former places of worship if it was all for nothing. Sometimes it was, though, and he'd come home with nothing but sore legs and many hours lost. But other times it was well worth it. He once found a Kilimary cross that he had professionally carbon dated back to the Middle Ages. On another trip to a more recently deserted oratory on a secluded beach in Cloggerhead, Daniel came home with a battered Celtic harp that he pawned for over 1,000 euros. Turns out it had belonged to a prominent figure that once regulated the chapel. But this time he hit something big. In the damp cellar of the stone chapel, he stumbled upon a hole in the dirt. It was too small for him to fit through comfortably, but he braved its slim entrance and the claustrophobic tunnel that followed. The smell of dirt and old vegetation filled his nostrils, and he gagged. Finally, he made it out of the tunnel and into a large, open space surrounded by dirt walls. There was a wooden table and a chair crudely made. There was an old chest against the wall with tattered green clothing and ripped black leather boots. Their size appeared to be that of a child's. At the bottom of the chest was a small wooden box. Daniel extracted the box and flipped its lid open. His eyes widened at the sight of five pure gold coins. He picked one up, never in his life having seen such value in the palm of his hand. And there were four more in that small box. He would be set for life. His family would be set for life. He and his wife would live in exquisite luxury and his son, Declan, would get a life and education that would provide him so many opportunities, opportunities that Daniel never had for himself. Daniel stuffed all five coins into a wool pouch that he kept slung around his body and called it quits. There was nothing else he could find that would ever top the golden coins. Ever. That night, Daniel shared his discovery with Declan and his wife Erin. Erin's mind was blown. She couldn't find the words to describe her exhilaration. Declan, although not understanding the vast importance of his father's find, still appreciated their shiny look and how they felt in his hands. Night fell over County Lock. Bush crickets and barn owls came to life in the darkness, creating a sense of common comfort. However, this time, it was a false sense of comfort. Someone crept outside the Burns' cottage. Someone small, with crooked teeth, rancid breath, and a sinister agenda. And then, in the silence of the night, that small someone knocked on the cottage door. Declan was the one who heard the knocking. He opened his eyes and sat up in bed. He waited. There was another knock a single, quick one on his bedroom window. He looked over and saw a dark silhouette moving about within the window's frame. The shrouded figure stopped moving, its eyes taking on a dull yellow glow. Psst! The mysterious figure called out. Declan, although nervous, thought maybe it was one of the children who lived nearby. He thought maybe the child was in trouble. Declan hopped out of bed and crept to the window. 
lifted the sash and found himself face to face with the tiny prowler. It wasn't a child at all. It was a leprechaun, a creature of folklore told in the region for centuries. He was short, plump, wore tattered green clothing and a floppy tweed cylindrical hat with a wraparound buckle. Once Declan made eye contact with him, the dull yellow glow in its eyes faded away. The leprechaun smiled, exposing his crooked teeth. "'I am looking for me gold,' the creature whispered in a hushed, haunting tone. Declan didn't respond. He rubbed his eyes, thinking he was dreaming. The leprechaun cackled. <laughs> "'Me gold, boy!' he laughed. Where, "'Where is me gold?' I, "'I don't know,' Declan said. Leprechaun's smile vanished and was replaced by an annoyed frown. Suddenly, he hopped through the window, forcing Declan back into his room. The leprechaun landed on the floor with a thump, tiny green embers swirling up from the carpet around his boots. Declan couldn't believe his eyes. He continued to back up until he bumped into his bed. The leprechaun staggered towards him, oddly swaying slightly from side to side. "'Me good, child!' the leprechaun whispered again, this time in a more urgent and grave tone. "'Your father stole five coins from me. I want them back!' Declan shook his head. "'I, I don't know what you're talking about!' "'Sure you do. Thievery is a crime, is it not?' Thou who commits such acts should be punished. You agree, don't you?" Declan remained silent. His heart began to race. If someone stole something from you, do you not think you should pay for his crimes? The creature said, the yellow glow returning to his eyes. Declan hesitated, but ultimately nodded, agreeing with the leprechaun. The leprechaun smiled, his crooked teeth exposed once again and the yellow in his eyes fading. I'm glad you agree. Let's start it over. I'm Shmi, a leprechaun, don't you see? Uh, Declan, the young boy nervously said. You seem surprised by me, don't you believe? I do now, Declan said. Good. Now, Declan, I want to reward you with gold of your own for the return of mine. Will you help me? Declan thought for a moment. If you were to give the leprechaun his coins back, in exchange for other gold, surely his father wouldn't care. Would he? Gold was gold. I can give it to my father then? Declan asked. To, to replace what he took from you? You can do what you wish with it. Cherish it. Spend it. Okay, Declan whispered. Stay here and be quiet. The leprechaun motioned like he was zipping his lips shut and then excitedly galloped around the room in a playful jig. Declan left this room quietly and crept through his home, stumbling across the wool pouch his father kept the coins in. It was on their kitchen table. He reached in and pulled out each of the five coins, one by one. By themselves, they didn't seem to weigh much, but with all five at once in his hands, he could feel their heftiness. Declan walked them back to his bedroom and closed the door. Shmi was perched atop a bookshelf in the corner of the room. Declan offered the wool pouch. Here they are, he said. The leprechaun hopped down once again with a thud on the floor and swirling green embers. He scuttled quickly to Declan and snatched the wool pouch from his grip. He opened it and squealed in delight upon seeing his gold coins. <laughs> I as promised, the leprechaun said. I will reward you with gold of your own. Do what you wish with it. Cherish it. Spend it. I know you'll be tempted to. It'll be yours. Declan already knew he was just going to give it to his father. He already felt bad for taking the coins, but if his father was in the wrong, he needed to make it right. After all, gold was gold, and they would still have some after this night. The leprechaun dumped the coins into his hand, clenched his fist, and then opened it. A burst of sparkling light in his palm made the gold disappear. The leprechaun smiled again and tossed the wool pouch back to Declan. "'Check this pouch in the morning,' he said with an honorary glee. He turned and hopped back through the bedroom window, disappearing into the night. Declan returned to his bed. He was having a hard time believing what he had just been through. He always thought leprechauns were nothing more than myths and folklore. How wrong he was! This only opened the door for so many other possibilities in the world. What else existed out there? 
When morning came, Declan was the first to awake. He walked out into the living area, rubbing the sleep from his eyes and thinking about what had transpired overnight. Was it a dream? It had to have been a dream, right? He walked into the kitchen expecting to see his parents up and drinking their morning coffee, but there was no one at the table, only the wool pouch. It all came flooding back now. It wasn't a dream. Declan really did have a run-in with a real live leprechaun. And if he actually held up his side of the bargain, there was to be gold within his father's wool pouch. He walked to the table and lifted the pouch. It already felt heavier than it did with the five coins inside. Declan smiled. Did he give us more? He excitedly thought. Father will be so happy. As Declan opened the pouch and pulled out a heavy, golden object from inside, his mother walked into the kitchen, wrapping a robe around herself and looking confused. Declan, good morning, she said, surprised to see him awake so early. She looked around the kitchen with slight concern. Is your father not out here? He wasn't in bed. No, I haven't seen him, Declan said as he turned the object around in his hand. It was a solid gold figurine, precisely detailed to accurately depict his father. Wow, Declan uttered in amazement. This looks just like… Declan stopped in mid-sentence. He felt his face go cold and a daunting chill inched up his back. There was an engraving at the bottom of the golden figurine. It said, Thievery is a crime. The thief paid this time. The price for what he stole of mine. Forever will he be what he selfishly stole from me. Will he be cherished? Will he be sold? No matter his fate, now he knows not ever to steal a leprechaun's gold. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, Scary Stories for Kids.